So I've been using iOS 14 for just over a week now, which is probably long enough for me to give you my honest opinion on it so far. So today we're going to get hands on with it and we're going to take a look at some of my favourite features so far that I'm already using on a daily basis and a few hidden ones that you might not even know about. So before we jump in, I just want to add that this is an iOS 14 beta and a developer beta at that. So it's not open to the public yet and I wouldn't recommend installing it on your daily phone just in case. Having said that, I did and I've had no issues at all over the last week. Every single app or task that I've thrown at it has worked first time. So first up, the widgets. Okay, sure, this isn't anything new. Android have been doing it for years, but this is new to iOS. So on this beta version of iOS 14, we're limited to which apps that we can use as widgets. But I'm gonna assume and hope at least that by the time the official iOS rolls out later this year, that more and more app developers get on board and take advantage of these widgets. So I'm already using some widgets now, and I really like the layout. But what I'm going to do for this demonstration is I'm going to delete these anyway, just so I can show you how to add and move them around on your home screen. So to add a new widget, you just need to press and hold anywhere on the screen or an app. Then you just need to tap the plus icon at the top left of the screen, and this will allow you to add a new widget. So these are the apps that we have to choose from today. So we've got news, notes, the weather, music, and a few others. So now you can just choose how big you want the widget to be. A square, which takes up one space of four apps or double the width, or even larger again. Let's go with the wide widget. So you tap add widget, and now we've added it to the home screen. Okay, now let's add another one. So in this case, I'm gonna add this app, but this time we're going to actually merge it over the top of the previous widget that I've already installed. So once you've added it, you just drag and drop it over the existing widget, and now we can swipe up or down to toggle between the two apps. That's pretty neat. Then to remove, you just press and hold like a normal app to remove it, so pretty simple. Here are a few more apps that I'll add now. And then you can move them around on the screen too, so the placement is pretty limited, but it's good enough for me. So yes, the widgets aren't anything new, but they are welcomed and definitely something that I already have started using. It'd be good to see more apps and app developers taking this on board. For example, if I could see my car battery at a glance without having to open the app, that would be awesome. And another awesome feature is the ability to turn off pages completely from your home screen. So you just edit the home screen again by clicking and holding, but this time we will press the dots at the bottom of the screen. And now we can untick the pages that we don't want to see. And by doing this, all new apps that I've downloaded in the future will be added directly to the app library, which we're gonna look at next. So I'm pretty organized anyway when it comes to storing my apps, so I've been using folders for years, but the app library is awesome. So basically what it does is it takes your apps and it smart groups them together into folders that it thinks you need. Now one thing to note though is you cannot really edit this view, so you're not able to rename the folders and you cannot delete or move the files from each folder. If you do try to delete an app within this view, it will actually delete the app from your phone, not just the app library. So onto the UI improvements, and these are definitely some of my favorite ones. So first up, the incoming phone calls. Now this is probably my most favorite, and it's really, really nice. So usually when you receive an incoming call, it takes up the entire screen and it prevents you from continuing in the app that you are already in. Well, now it's just a small notification box at the top. So it lets you continue in the app and you can either swipe up to remove the call or obviously you can answer it or you can cancel it. So this is a really nice feature. And Siri, well that has had an all new compact design too. So it looks a lot cleaner than before. It now means that you can use Siri while in another app without it taking up the entire screen. Okay, now let's talk about picture in picture. Now this is a great new feature too. So essentially it's multitasking. Now what it allows you to do is it allows you to continue watching your videos while using a different app. So here for example, I'm watching YouTube, but I'm flicking between different apps on my phone. Now at the moment, the YouTube app isn't working, so this feature does not work in the YouTube app. So I'm using the browser instead, but I will assume that this will be implemented before launch. So messages on the whole look the same, but what they've done is they've added a couple of new features, some of which you're already familiar with if you use apps like WhatsApp. One feature that I really like is the ability to pin conversations to the top. So these are ideal for the important people or contacts that you've got, where you can jump straight to them without scrolling through the list. You can pin up to nine here in a three by three grid. 
Also, if you're in a group, you can rename and set a group photo now. Again, much like WhatsApp has done for years. Also, if you reply to messages in the chat, it will show in line too. So again, a nice feature that we're used to seeing elsewhere. Memojis have also had an update. So there seems to be a lot more options here now including different headwear, for example. So this feature is obviously added for security and privacy concerns. But every time that you use your camera or microphone now, you will see a green icon at the top of the screen. I actually think this is a great little touch and it means that if there are any third party apps out there using your camera or microphone, possibly without you even knowing, it will show up. And also if you do swipe down to view your control center, it will show if the camera has recently been used. And I think it's within about the last 30 seconds is what I've tested so far. Another great feature that I've discovered when opening every app for the first time, if it needs to have access to your photos, is it asks you for permission to access all of your photos or just the selected ones or none. Ideal if you're only using an app to submit one or two items and you don't feel comfortable giving them full access to your camera roll. So I've been using Google Translate for years, but now on iOS it has this awesome app too, and I really, really like it. So it's a case of just typing or speaking any words you wish into Translate, choosing the language, and hitting go. It'll then translate and it'll give you the option to play the audio back too. It's also a really nice interface. Okay, so have you heard of the back tap? Well, I hadn't either until this update. So basically, you enable the option to either double or triple tap the back of your phone to run a task all through the accessibility options so we just go to settings then accessibility touch and then you scroll down to back tap so i've got mine set to double tap for home and triple tap to take a screenshot but here are the other options available too again this is only in ios 14. so i don't usually use the ios wallpapers but this year we've got some nice new ones again so these are also dynamic for light and dark mode. So the notes app has had a subtle redesign too. So I use my notes daily as my to-do list and the small changes that I've seen so far look great. So the main window looks fresh and clean showing the pin notes at the top clearly separated from the rest. Then inside the notes themselves on the whole it kind of looks the same but there are a few quick actions available now like scanning, pinning, locking and deleting. Again a nice interface update. And another thing that I've noticed is the Photos app. It appears to have had a slight tweak too. So you can now filter your photos by favorites, edited, videos, and photos. Sure, you could do the photos and the videos filtering before, but now it will only show your edited photos. So for my testing though, this doesn't seem to work all the time for me, but obviously this could just be a bug. You can also zoom in and out of your photos by pinching. Now this is a nice feature, this was already available in the Photos tab but you can now do this in the Albums tab too. Suggested Automations is a nice new feature for the Home app too. It will suggest useful ways to run tasks or routines for you. So for example, turning certain lights on and off or changing colour, which the new Smart Colour update is great too. So it will automatically set lights to an appropriate colour for that time of day. So lighter and cooler for the daytime, and warmer for the nights. This is brilliant for maximizing comfort and productivity. Obviously some apps already control this, so for example LifeX, which is what I use, or Philips Hue, but the smart feature of Home is great and a nice addition. Maps have also had a huge improvement. Some of these features should definitely be implemented into Google Maps too. So cyclists will be routed along bike lanes and bike friendly roads. That's a great feature, not one that I will use myself, but it's still awesome. Then with more and more people moving to electric vehicles now, their new maps will allow you to plan your journey if you own an EV. It'll even automatically add in charging stops along the route. So this is something that Tesla do already in their cars, so the fact that your iPhone can do this is awesome. So when does iOS 14 launch? Well, it will launch at the end of 2020, around the time that the new iPhone comes out, probably September or October time. Now there will be a public beta as well, where anyone can download it to test it out. And that'll go live probably sometime in July. But if you wanna get hands on with it, that's probably the most stable version to go for. So since I posted a photo on my Instagram last week, I was inundated with messages asking, how do I get the developer beta? Well, there are two ways you can get it. So one way is that you're a developer. So you have a developer account and you pay $99 a year and you get early access to any of the betas. The other option is to install the IPSW file directly from some third-party websites. 
by bypassing the need for a developer account. I'll leave a link in the description to both options. So if you want to check it out, then you can. But again, I don't recommend installing it unless you really cannot wait and you're happy to give this a risk. It's been stable for me, but it might not be for you. And that kind of wraps up my first week with iOS 14. I've had no issues. It's run smoothly. It's probably as stable as a general release. But what do you think? Are there any features here that you're looking forward to trying out for yourself? And if you've got any questions at all about iOS 14, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching. And if this video was useful to you or you're interested in seeing more tech videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.